The conditional preservation of the saints, or commonly conditional security, is the Arminian belief that believers are kept safe by God in their saving relationship with Him upon the condition of a persevering faith in Christ. Arminians find the scriptures describing both the initial act of faith in Christ, whereby the relationship is effected, and the persevering faith in Him whereby the relationship is sustained. The relationship of the believer to Christ is never a static relationship existing as the irrevocable consequence of a past decision, act, or experience. Rather, it is a living union, proceeding upon a living faith in a living Savior. This living union is captured in this simple command by Christ, Remain in me, and I in you. John chapter 15 verse 4 According to Arminians biblical saving faith expresses itself in love and obedience to God Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 Hebrews chapter 5 verses 8 to 9 In the Arminian Confession of 1621 the remonstrants or Arminian leaders affirmed that true or living faith operates through love and that God chooses to give salvation and eternal life through his son and to finally glorify all those and only those truly believing in his name, or obeying his gospel, and persevering in faith and obedience until death." Arminians believe that, "...it is abundantly evident from the scriptures that the believer is secure." Furthermore, believers have assurance in knowing there is no external power or circumstance that can separate them from the love of God they enjoy in union with Christ. Romans chapter 8 verses 35 to 39, John chapter 10 verses 27 to 29. Nevertheless, Arminians see numerous warnings in scripture directed to genuine believers about the possibility of falling away in unbelief and thereby becoming severed from their saving union with God through Christ. Arminians hold that if a believer becomes an unbeliever commits apostasy, they necessarily cease to partake of the promises of salvation and eternal life made to believers who continue in faith and remain united to Christ. Therefore, Arminians seek to follow the biblical writers in warning believers about the real dangers of committing apostasy. A sure and biblical way to avoid apostasy is to admonish believers to mature spiritually in their relationship with God in union with Christ and through power of the Spirit. Maturity takes place as Christ followers keep on meeting with fellow believers for mutual encouragement and strength, exhorting each to love God and others, to be growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to persevere in faith in prayerful dependence upon God through various trials and temptations. Historical background Free will Baptist scholar Robert Passarelli states, Appropriately last among the points of tension among Calvinism and Arminianism is the question whether those who have been regenerated must necessarily persevere or be preserved or may apostatize and be lost. Arminius himself and the original remonstrants avoided a clear conclusion on this matter. But they raised the question. And the natural implications of the views at the heart of Arminianism, even in its early stages as a formal movement, tended to question whether Calvinism's assumptions of necessary perseverance was truly biblical. Those tendencies indicated by the questions raised did not take long to reach fruition, and thus Calvinism and Arminianism have come to be traditionally divided on this issue. Prior to the time of the debate between Calvinists and the Arminians at the Synod of Dort (1618–1619), the view in the early church appears to be on the side of conditional security. From his research of the writings of the early church fathers (AD 90–313), patristic scholar David W. Burcott arrived at this conclusion. Since the early Christians believed that our continued faith and obedience are necessary for salvation, it naturally follows that they believed that a saved person could still end up being lost. Topic: <laughs> Arminius and conditional security. Topic: Jacobus Arminius (1560–1609) arrived at the same conclusion in his own readings of the early church fathers. In responding to Calvinist William Perkins' arguments for the perseverance of the saints, he wrote, "...in reference to the sentiments of the early church fathers, you doubtless know that almost all antiquity is of the opinion, that believers can fall away and perish." On another occasion he notes that such a view was never "...reckoned as a heretical opinion," but "...has always had more supporters in the Church of Christ, than that which denies its possibility." Arminius' opinion on the subject is clearly communicated in this relatively brief statement. 
My sentiments respecting the perseverance of the saints are, that those persons who have been grafted into Christ by true faith, and have thus been made partakers of his life-giving spirit, possess sufficient powers or strength to fight against Satan, sin, the world and their own flesh, and to gain the victory over these enemies—yet not without the assistance of the grace of the same Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ also by his Spirit assists them in all their temptations, and affords them the ready aid of his hand, and, provided they stand prepared for the battle, implore his help, and be not wanting to themselves, Christ preserves them from falling. So that it is not possible for them, by any of the cunning craftiness or power of Satan, to be either seduced or dragged out of the hands of Christ. But I think it is useful and will be quite necessary in our first convention, or synod, to institute a diligent inquiry from the scriptures, whether it is not possible for some individuals through negligence to desert the commencement of their existence in Christ, to cleave again to the present evil world, to decline from the sound doctrine which was once delivered to them, to lose a good conscience, and to cause divine grace to be ineffectual. Though I here openly and ingenuously affirm, I never taught that a true believer can, either totally or finally fall away from the faith, and perish, yet I will not conceal, that there are passages of Scripture which seem to me to wear this aspect, and those answers to them which I have been permitted to see, are not of such a kind as to approve themselves on all points to my understanding. On the other hand, certain passages are produced for the contrary doctrine of unconditional perseverance which are worthy of much consideration. For Arminius the believer's security is conditional. Provided they stand prepared for the battle, implore his help, and be not wanting to themselves. This complements what Arminius says elsewhere in his writings. God resolves to receive into favor those who repent and believe, and to save in Christ, on account of Christ, and through Christ, those who persevere in faith, but to leave under sin and wrath those who are impenitent and unbelievers, and to condemn them as aliens from Christ. In another place he writes, God wills that they, who believe and persevere in faith, shall be saved, but that those, who are unbelieving and impenitent, shall remain under condemnation. The remonstrance and conditional security after the death of Arminius in 1609, the Remonstrants maintained their leader's view on conditional security and his uncertainty regarding the possibility of apostasy. This is evidenced in the fifth article drafted by its leaders in 1610. That those who are incorporated into Christ by a true faith, and have thereby become partakers of his life-giving spirit, have thereby full power to strive against Satan, sin, the world, and their own flesh, and to win the victory, it being well understood that it is ever through the assisting grace of the Holy Ghost, and that Jesus Christ assists them through his spirit in all temptations, extends to them his hand, and if only they are ready for the conflict, and desire his help, and are not inactive, keeps them from falling, so that they, by not craft or power of Satan, can be misled nor plucked out of Christ. S hand, according to the word of Christ, John chapter 10 verse 28. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand, but whether they are capable, through negligence, of forsaking again the first beginnings of their life in Christ, of again returning to this present evil world, of turning away from the holy doctrine which was delivered them, of losing a good conscience, of becoming devoid of grace, that must be more particularly determined out of the holy scripture, before we ourselves can teach it with full persuasion of our minds. Sometime between 1610, and the official proceeding of the Synod of Dort 1618, the Remonstrants became fully persuaded in their minds that the Scriptures taught that a true believer was capable of falling away from faith and perishing eternally as an unbeliever. They formalized their views in the opinion of the Remonstrants. 1618. Points 3 and 4 in the fifth article read, True believers can fall from true faith and can fall into such sins as cannot be consistent with true and justifying faith. Not only is it possible for this to happen, but it even happens frequently. True believers are able to fall through their own fault into shameful and atrocious deeds, to persevere and to die in them, and therefore finally to fall and to perish. Passerelli remarks. Ever since that early period, then, when the issue was being examined again, Arminians have taught that those who are truly saved need to be warned against apostasy as a real and possible danger. Other Arminians who affirmed conditional security John Goodwin was a Puritan who presented the Arminian position of falling away in Redemption Redeemed 1651, which drew a lot of attention from Calvinists. 
In his book, English Bishop Lawrence Womack provides numerous scriptural references to the fifth article concerning perseverance delivered by the later Remonstrants. Philip van Limborch penned the first complete Remonstrant systematic theology in 1702 that included a section on apostasy. In 1710, a minister in the Church of England, Daniel Whitby (1638–1726), published a major work criticizing the five points of Calvinism, which involves their doctrine of unconditional perseverance. John Wesley (1703–1791), the founder of Methodism, was an outspoken defender of conditional security and critic of unconditional security. In 1751, Wesley defended his position in a work titled. Serious thoughts upon the perseverance of the saints. In it, he argued that a believer remains in a saving relationship with God if he continue in faith or endureth in faith unto the end. Wesley affirmed that a child of God, while he continues a true believer, cannot go to hell. However, if he makes a shipwreck of the faith, then a man that believes now may be an unbeliever some time hence and become a child of the devil. He then adds, God is the father of them that believe, so long as they believe. But the devil is the father of them that believe not, whether they did once believe or no. Like his Arminian predecessors, Wesley was convinced from the testimony of the scriptures that a true believer may abandon faith and the way of righteousness and fall from God as to perish everlastingly. From John Wesley onward, it looks as if every Methodist, Wesleyan pastor, scholar, or theologian in print has opposed unconditional perseverance. Thomas Oliver's 1725 to 1799, John Fletcher 1729 to 1783, Joseph Benson 1748 to 1821, Leroy M. Lee 1758 to 1816, Adam Clark 1762 to 1832, Nathan Bangs 1778 to 1862, Richard Watson, 1781 to 1833, Thomas Thornton, 1794 to 1860, Samuel Wakefield, 1799 to 1895, Luther Lee, 1800 to 1889, Amos Binney, 1802 to 1878, William H. Browning, 1805 to 1873, Daniel D. Whedon, 1805 to 1885, Thomas N. Ralston, 1806 to 1891, Thomas O. Summers, 18 1812–1882, Albert Nash 1812–1900, John Miley 1813–1895, Philip Pugh 1817–1871, Randolph S. Foster 1820–1903, William Burt Pope 1822–1903, B.T. Roberts 1823–1893, Daniel Steele 1824–1914, Benjamin Field 1827–1869, John Shaw Banks 18 35 to 1917 and Joseph Ager beat 1840 to 1924 topic apostasy definition and dangers topic topic the definition of apostasy topic apostasy means the deliberate disavowal of belief in Christ made by a formerly believing Christian." Creamer states that apostasia is used in the absolute sense of passing over to unbelief, thus a dissolution of the union with God subsisting through faith in Christ." Arminian scholar Robert Schenck writes, The English word apostasy is derived from the Greek noun, apostasia. Thayer defines apostasia as a falling away, defection, apostasy, in the Bible sc, from the true religion. The word appears twice in the New Testament Acts chapter 21 verse 21, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Its meaning is well illustrated in its use in Acts chapter 21 verse 21. You are teaching apostasy defection from Moses. A kindred word is the synonym apostation. Thayer defines apostation, as used in the Bible, as divorce, repudiation. He cites Matthew chapter 19 verse 7 and Mark chapter 10 verse 4. A bill of divorce, apostation. He also cites Matthew chapter 5 verse 31. Let him give her a bill of divorce, apostation. He cites the use of apostation by Demosthenes as defection, of a freedman from his patron. 
Moulton and Milligan cite the use of apostation as a bond of relinquishing of property sold, a contract of renunciation, the renunciation of rights of ownership. They also cite the use of apostation with reference to a deed of divorce. The meaning of the related verb aphistemi is, of course, consonant with the meaning of the nouns. It is used transitively in Acts chapter 5 verse 37. Drew away people after him. Intransitively, it means to depart, go away, desert, withdraw, fall away, become faithless, etc. I. Howard Marshall notes that aphistemi is used of giving up the faith in Luke chapter 8 verse 13, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 and Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12, and is used of departure from God in the LXX i.e., Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament. Marshall also notes that, "...the failure to persist in faith is expressed by other Greek words which mean falling away, drifting and stumbling." Of particular theological significance are the verb skandalizo fall away from faith, and the noun scandalon, enticement to unbelief, cause of salvation's loss, seduction. Shank concluded, an apostate, according to the New Testament definition, is one who has severed his union with Christ by withdrawing from an actual saving relationship with him. Apostasy is impossible for men who have not entered into a saving relationship with God. The warnings against succumbing to the ugly peril of apostasy are directed to men who obviously are true believers." J. Rodman Williams adds, One of the mistakes made by those who affirm the invariable continuance of salvation is the viewing of salvation too much as a state. From this perspective, to be saved is to enter into a state of grace. However true it is that one moves into a new realm, whether it is called the kingdom of God, eternal life, or other like expression, the heart of the matter is the establishment of a new relationship with God. Prior to salvation, one was without God, or against God, cut off from his presence. Now through Jesus Christ reconciliation, at one meant with God, has occurred. Moreover, the Holy Spirit, who becomes present, is not merely some force or energy but God himself in a new and intimate relationship. Hence, if a person begins to drift away, it is not from some static condition or state, but from a person. It is a personal relationship that thereby is betrayed, broken, forfeited. This is the tragic meaning of apostasy. It is not so much giving up something, even so marvelous as salvation, but the forsaking of a person. Surely through such an action salvation too is forfeited. But the critical matter is the severing of a relationship with the personal God. Topic. The dangers of apostasy Topic. Marshall finds four biblical dangers that could serve as precursors to committing apostasy. 1. Persecution by unbelievers. Believers are frequently tempted to give up their faith because of the difficulties of maintaining it amid fierce opposition. 2. Accepting false doctrine. Whatever form this presents itself, the temptation is to blunt the edge of faith in Jesus Christ and ultimately to destroy it altogether. 3. Temptation to sin. The significance of this form of temptation is that it causes the believer to deny the power of God to preserve him from sinning, to return to the very things from which he was saved by belief in Christ and which by their nature exclude a man from the kingdom of God, and to perform those acts which are expressly forbidden by the Lord. In other words, sin is an act and attitude which is incompatible with the obedience of faith, and hence constitutes a denial of faith. 4. Weariness in faith, this is where the believer gradually drifts away from his faith and passes into a state of apostasy. Marshall concludes, The New Testament contains too many warnings about the danger of sin and apostasy for us to be complacent about these possibilities. These dangers are real and not hypothetical. Methodist scholar Ben Witherington would add, the New Testament suggests that one is not eternally secure until one is securely in eternity. Short of that, there is the possibility of apostasy or rebellion against God by one who has believed in Christ. 
Apostasy, however, is not to be confused with the notion of accidentally or unconsciously falling away. Apostasy is a conscious, willful rebellion against God. Unless one commits such an act of apostasy or rebellion, one need not worry about one's salvation, for God has a firm grip on the believer. With apostasy being a real possibility for Christians, Arminians seek to follow the example that New Testament writer s provide in urging Christians to persevere. Scott McKnight clarifies what perseverance means and doesn t mean for Arminians it doesn t mean sinlessness, it doesn t mean that we are on some steady and never failing incline up into pure sanctification, it does not deny stumbling or messy spirituality, it doesn t deny doubt and problems. It simply means that the person continues to walk with Jesus and doesn t walk away from him in a resolute manner. What it means is continuing trust in God. Since Arminians view sin as an act and attitude which constitutes a denial of faith, believers who persist in acting like unbelievers will eventually become one of them and share in their same destiny and doom. Therefore, the only people who need perseverance are Christians. And the only people who can commit apostasy are Christians. Non-Christians have nothing to persevere toward or apostatize from. Thus, when Christians are appropriately warned about the dangers of committing apostasy, such warnings can function as a moral injunction that strengthens commitment to holiness as well as the need to turn in complete trust to God in Christ through His Spirit. Topic. Biblical support Topic. Below are many key scriptures that Arminians have used to defend conditional security and the possibility of apostasy. Topic. Conditional security in the Old Testament Topic. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verses 18-20 Make sure there is no man or woman, clan or tribe among you today whose heart turns away from the Lord our God to go and worship the gods of those nations, make sure there is no root among you that produces such bitter poison. When such a person hears the words of this oath, he invokes a blessing on himself and therefore thinks, I will be safe, even though I persist in going my own way. The Lord will never be willing to forgive him, his wrath and zeal will burn against that man. All the curses written in this book will fall upon him, and the Lord will blot out his name from under heaven. Niv. 2 Chronicles 15 verses 1-2 The Spirit of God came upon Azariah the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you, but if you forsake him, he will forsake you. ESV. Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 20-24 the soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed, keeps all my statutes, and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him, because of the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Says the Lord God. And not that he should turn from his ways and live. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered, because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed, because of them he shall die." NKJV Topic. Conditional security in the teachings of Jesus Topic. Matthew chapter 5 verses 27-30 Jesus said, You heard that it was said. You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone looking at a woman so as to desire her already committed adultery with her in his heart. And if your right eye is causing you to fall, scandalizo, tear it out and throw it from you. 
For it is better for you that one of your body parts perish and your whole body not be thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand is causing you to fall, scandalizo, cut it off and throw it from you. For it is better for you that one of your body parts perish and your whole body not go into Gehenna. Disciples Literal New Testament or DLNT Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 Jesus said, Not everyone saying to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of the heavens, but the one doing the will of my Father in the heavens. DLNT Matthew chapter 10 verses 16 to 17, 21 to 22 Jesus is speaking to his twelve disciples. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. ESV Matthew chapter 10 verses 32 to 33 Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Therefore everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. NASB Matthew chapter 18 verses 6 to 9 Jesus is speaking to his disciples. But whoever causes one of these little ones believing in me to fall scandalizo, it would be better for him that a donkey millstone be hung around his neck and he be sunk in the deep part of the sea. Woe to the world because of the causes of falling scandalin. For it is a necessity that causes of falling scandalin should come, nevertheless, woe to the person through whom the cause of falling scandalin comes. But if your hand or your foot is causing you to fall scandalizo, cut it off and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter into life crippled or lame than to be thrown into the eternal fire having two hands or two feet. And if your eye is causing you to fall, scandalizo, tear it out and throw it from you. It is better for you to enter into life one-eyed than to be thrown into the Gehenna of fire having two eyes. DLNT Matthew chapter 18 verses 10 to 14 Jesus is speaking to his disciples. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. ESV Matthew chapter 24 verses 4, 42 to 51 Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is staying away a long time, and he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Niv Matthew chapter 24 verses 9 to 14 Jesus said to his disciples, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away scandalizo, and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. 
ESV Mark chapter 8 verses 34 to 38 and he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them if anyone wishes to come after me he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul for what will a man give in exchange for his soul for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. NASB Mark chapter 9 verses 42-50 Jesus is talking to his disciples. And whoever causes one of these little ones believing in me to fall scandalizo, it would be better for him if instead a donkey millstone were lying around his neck, and he had been thrown into the sea. And if your hand should be causing you to fall scandalizo, cut it off. It is better that you enter into life crippled than go into Gehenna having two hands—into the inextinguishable fire. And if your foot should be causing you to fall scandalizo, cut it off. It is better that you enter into life lame than be thrown into Gehenna having two feet. And if your eye should be causing you to fall scandalizo, throw it out. It is better that you enter into the kingdom of God one-eyed than be thrown into Gehenna having two eyes—where their worm does not come to an end, and the fire is not quenched." DLNT Luke chapter 8 verses 11–13 Jesus said, "...now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved." And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root, they believe for a while, and in time of testing fall away. ESV John chapter 12 verses 24-26 Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him." ESV John chapter 15 verses 1-6 Jesus is speaking to his eleven disciples minus Judas. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit he removes, and he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit, because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. HCSB Topic. Conditional security in the Book of Acts Topic. Acts chapter 14 verses 21 to 22 they Paul and Barnabas preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They said, Niv. Acts chapter 20 verses 28 to 32 Watch out for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own Son. I know that after I am gone fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Even from among your own group men will arise, teaching perversions of the truth to draw the disciples away after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that night and day for three years I did not stop warning each one of you with tears. And now I entrust you to God and to the message of His grace. This message is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Net Topic. Conditional security in the writings of the Apostle Paul Topic. Romans chapter 8 verses 12 to 13 So then, brethren, we are under obligation, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, 
For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die, but if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. NASB Romans chapter 11 verses 19 to 21 Then you will say, Branches were cut off so that I could be grafted in. That. S. Right. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you remain only because of faith. Do not be arrogant, but be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he certainly will not spare you either. Consider, then, the kindness and severity of God, his severity toward those who fell, but God's kindness toward you. If you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. ISV. Romans chapter 14 verses 13 to 23 Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. If your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not by your eating destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother to fall. So whatever you believe about these things keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. Niv. 1984. Romans chapter 16 verses 17 to 20 I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I am full of joy over you, but I want you to be wise about what is good, and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Niv. 1984. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 Don. T you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. Niv. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 7 to 11 The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourselves cheat and do wrong, and you do this to your brothers. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters nor adulterers nor male prostitutes nor homosexual offenders nor thieves nor the greedy nor drunkards nor slanderers nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Niv. 1984. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 9 to 13 Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you, with all your knowledge, eating in an idol's temple, 1. T that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother or sister, for whom Christ died, is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. Niv. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 24-27 Do you not know that the runners in a stadium all race, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Now everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. However, they do it to receive a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. Therefore, I do not run like one who runs aimlessly, or box like one who beats the air. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control, so that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. HCSB 
1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 7 to 8, 11 to 12 Don't become idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and got up to play. Let us not commit sexual immorality as some of them did, and in a single day 23,000 people fell dead. Now these things happened to them as examples, and they were written as a warning to us, on whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, whoever thinks he stands must be careful not to fall. HCSB 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1-2 Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you. Unless you believed in vain. ESV 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 1-5, 13-15 I wish that you would be patient with me in a little foolishness, but indeed you are being patient with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, because I promised you in marriage to one husband, to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that just as the serpent deceived Eve by his treachery, your minds may be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus different from the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit than the one you received, or a different gospel than the one you accepted, you put up with it well enough. 5 For I consider myself not at all inferior to those super apostles. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will correspond to their actions. Net. Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 to 9 I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Niv. Galatians chapter 4 verses 9 to 11 But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless basic forces? Do you want to be enslaved to them all over again? You are observing religious days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you that my work for you may have been in vain. Net. Galatians chapter 5 verses 2 to 4 mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ, you have fallen away from grace. Niv. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16, 19 to 21 But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, ESV. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 to 10 Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap, if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. ESV Ephesians chapter 5 verses 3 to 7 But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure or greedy person—such a man as an idolater—has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them, Niv. 
Colossians chapter 1 verses 21 to 23 and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him if indeed you continue in the faith stable and steadfast not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard ESV 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 so when we could stand it no longer we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens we sent Timothy, who is our brother and God's fellow worker in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. You know quite well that we were destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter might have tempted you and our efforts might have been useless. Niv, 1984. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 18 to 19 This command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you fight the good fight, keeping faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith, NASB. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 But the Spirit explicitly says that in later times some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons, NASB. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 13 to 16 Until I, Paul, come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Be diligent in these matters, give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Niv. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 10 to 13. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. ESV. Topic. Conditional security in the book of Hebrews Topic. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Niv. Hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 to 14 so, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion, during the time of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for forty years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation, I said, their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my ways, so I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called, today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. Niv. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful. Let us fear lest. ESV, CF. NASB, HCSB. That none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us, just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them, because those who heard did not combine it with faith. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. And on the seventh day God rested from all his work. And again in the passage above he says, they shall never enter my rest. It still remains that some will enter that rest, and those who formerly had the gospel preached to them did not go in, because of their disobedience. Therefore God again set a certain day, calling it today, when a long time later he spoke through David, as was said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Quote. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. 
There remains, then, a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. Niv 1984 Hebrews chapter 5 verses 8 to 9 Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. ESV Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 to 8 For it is impossible, in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away, to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. For land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it, and produces a crop useful to those for whose sake it is cultivated, receives a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed, and its end is to be burned. ESV Hebrews chapter 10 verses 26 to 31 For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment, and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment, do you think, will be deserved by the one who has spurned the Son of God, and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, and has outraged the Spirit of grace? For we know the one who has said, Vengeance belongs to me, I will repay, and again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. ESV Hebrews chapter 10 verses 36 to 39 For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God you may receive what is promised. For yet a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay, but my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. ESV Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 13 Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. ESV Hebrews chapter 12 verses 14 to 17 Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy, without holiness no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral, or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. Even though he sought the blessing with tears, he could not change what he had done. Niv. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 18 to 29 For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. 
But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship, with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire, ESV. Topic. Conditional security in the book of James Topic. James chapter 1 verse 12 Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him, Niv. James chapter 5 verses 19 to 20 My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. ESV Topic. Conditional security in the books of 2 Peter and Jude Topic. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 8 to 11 for if these qualities faith virtue knowledge self-control perseverance godliness brotherly affection love are yours and are increasing they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure, for if you practice these qualities you will never fall. For in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 20-22 For if, after escaping the world's corruptions through a full knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Messiah, they are again entangled and conquered by those corruptions, then their last condition is worse than their former one. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to know it and turn their backs on the holy commandment that was committed to them. The proverb is true that describes what has happened to them. A dog returns to its vomit. And. A pig that is washed goes back to wallow in the mud. ISV. 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 16 to 17 Some things in them Paul's letters are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, leading to their own destruction, as they do the rest of the scriptures. And so, dear friends, since you already know these things, continually be on your guard not to be carried away by the deception of lawless people. Otherwise, you may fall from your secure position, ISV. Jude chapters 20 to 21 But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. ESV Topic. Conditional security in the epistles of John Topic. 1 John chapter 2 verses 18 to 27 Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come. We know from this that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us, for if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. However, they went out so that it might be made clear that none of them belongs to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you have knowledge. I have not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar, if not the one who denies that Jesus is the Messiah? This one is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son can have the Father, he who confesses the Son has the Father as well. What you have heard from the beginning must remain in you. If what you have heard from the beginning remains in you, then you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he himself made to us, eternal life. I have written these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. The anointing you received from him remains in you, and you don't need anyone to teach you. 
Instead, his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie, just as he has taught you. Remain in him. HCSB. 2 John chapters 7 to 11 Many deceivers have gone out into the world, they do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so you don't lose what we have worked for, but that you may receive a full reward. Anyone who does not remain in Christ's teaching but goes beyond it, does not have God. The one who remains in that teaching, this one has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your home, and don't say, welcome, to him, for the one who says, welcome, to him shares in his evil works, HCSB. Topic. Conditional security in the book of Revelation. Topic. Revelation chapter 2 verses 10 to 11, Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison, so that you will be tested, and you will have tribulation for ten days be faithful until death, and I, Jesus, will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches he who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death, NASB. Revelation chapter 3 verses 4 to 5. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. NASB Revelation chapter 3 verses 10-11 because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing, that hour which is about to come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. I am coming quickly, hold fast what you have, so that no one will take your crown. NASB Revelation chapter 21 verses 7-8 to He who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God and he will be my son. But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, NASB. Revelation chapter 22 verses 18 to 19 I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book, and if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book, ESV. Topic. New Testament Greek in support of conditional security. Topic. Arminians find further support for conditional security from numerous scriptures where the verb believes occurs in the Greek present tense. Greek scholars and commentators both Calvinist and non-Calvinist have noted that Greek present tense verbs generally refer to continuous action, especially present participles. For example, in his textbook, Basics of Biblical Greek Grammar, Calvinist William D. Mounts writes, The present participle is built on the present tense stem of the verb. It describes a continuous action. It will often be difficult to carry this ongoing nuance into your translation, but this must be the foremost consideration in your mind. Calvinist Daniel Wallace brings out this ongoing nuance for the present participle believes in John chapter 3 verse 16. Everyone who continually believes in him should not perish. In this gospel, there seems to be a qualitative distinction between the ongoing act of believing and the simple fact of believing. He argues for this understanding not simply because believes is in the present tense, but to the use of the present participle of pistiuan, pistiuan, believing, especially in soteriological i.e., salvation contexts in the NT. Wallace goes on to elaborate, the aspectual force of the present participle hopistion the one believing seems to be in contrast with the aorist participle hopistius is the one having believed the present participle for the one believing occurs 6 times as often 43 times in comparison to the aorist most often in soteriological contexts cf 
John chapter 1 verse 12, 315, 16, 18, 336, 635, 47, 64, 738, 1125, 1246, Acts chapter 2 verse 44, 1043, 1339, Rom 116, 322, 411, 24, 933, 10 to 4, 11, 1 Cor 121, 1 Cor 1422, Bis, Gal 322, EPH 119, 1 Thess 1 to 7. 2 10, 13, 1 Pet 2 6, 7, 1 John 5 verses 1, 5, 10, 13. Thus, it seems that since the aorist participle was a live option to describe a believer, it is unlikely that when the present was used, it was aspectually flat. The present was the tense of choice most likely because the New Testament writers by and large saw continual belief as a necessary condition of salvation. Along these lines, it seems significant that the promise of salvation is almost always given to Hopistiuan, the one believing cf. several of the above cited texts, almost never to Hopistiuses, the one having believed apart from Mark chapter 16 verse 16, John chapter 7 verse 39 and Heb 4 to 3 come the closest. Arminian Greek scholar J. Harold Greenlee supplies the following literal translation of several verses where the Greek word translated believes in our modern translations occurs in the tense of continuous action. John chapter 3 verse 15. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 in order that everyone believing may have eternal life in him. John chapter 3 verse 16. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 in order that everyone believing in him should not perish but should have eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 36 The one believing on the son has eternal life John chapter 5 verse 24 The one hearing my word and believing him who sent me has eternal life John chapter 6 verse 35 The one believing in me shall never thirst John chapter 6 verse 40 Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 that everyone beholding the Son and believing in him should have eternal life. John chapter 6 verse 47. The one believing has eternal life. John chapter 11 verses 25, 26. The one believing in me, even though he dies he shall live, and everyone living and believing in me shall never die. John chapter 20 verse 31. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 in order that by means of believing you may have life in his name. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. It is the power of God to salvation to everyone believing. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. It pleased God to save the one believing. Of further significance is that. In many cases the results of the believing are also given in a continuous tense. As we keep believing, we keep on having eternal life John chapter 3 verses 15, 16, 36, 20, 31. It is this type of evidence which leads Arminians to conclude that eternal security is firmly promised to the one believing the person who continues to believe in Christ but not to the one having believed. The person who has merely exercised one single act of faith some time in the past. Indeed, true security rests in the fact that saving faith is not a single historical act, but a present tense, up to date, continuing process. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Scriptures that appear to contradict conditional security. Topic. Those who hold to perseverance of the saints cite a number of verses to support their view. The following are some of the most commonly cited. John chapter 5 verse 24 Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life, ESV. John chapter 6 verses 35, 37 to 40 Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me. 
and this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. ESV John chapter 10 verses 27 to 29 My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. ESV John chapter 17 verse 12 While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the Son of Destruction, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. ESV Romans chapter 8 verse 1 There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. ESV Romans chapter 8 verses 35, 37 to 39 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. ESV 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 8 to 9 God who will sustain you to the end guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord ESV 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability but with the temptation he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it ESV Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 to 14 In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. ESV Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. ESV 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18 The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. ESV Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. NASB 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5 who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time, NASB. 1 John chapter 3 verse 9 No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in him, he cannot go on sinning, because he has been born of God, Niv. Jude chapters 24 to 25 to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority, through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen, Niv. Arminians would argue that they have adequately provided explanations for how these verses and others can be easily reconciled with conditional security. Topic. Agreements and disagreements with opposing views Topic. A major difference between traditional Calvinists and Arminians is how they define apostasy see perseverance of the saints for the definition as it is referred to here. Topic. Traditional Calvinist view Topic. Traditional Calvinists say apostasy refers to people who fall away apostatize from a profession of faith, but who have never actually entered into a saving relationship with God through Christ. As noted earlier, Arminians understand that apostasy refers to a believer who has departed from a genuine saving relationship with God by developing an evil, unbelieving heart. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 In traditional Calvinism the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints does not stand alone but is a necessary part of the Calvinistic system of theology. The Calvinist doctrines of unconditional election and irresistible grace logically imply the certain salvation of those who receive these blessings. 
If God has eternally and unconditionally elected chosen some men to eternal life, and if his spirit irresistibly applies to them the benefits of salvation, then the inescapable conclusion is that these persons will be saved forever. Arminians acknowledge that the Calvinistic system is logically consistent if certain presuppositions are true, but they do not agree with these presuppositions, which include the Calvinist doctrines of unconditional election and irresistible grace. Traditional Calvinists agree with Arminians on the need for persevering in faith. Baptist scholar James Leo Garrett says it is important for people recognize that traditional Calvinist and Arminians do not differ as to whether continuing faith in Jesus Christ will be necessary for final or eschatological salvation. Both agree that it is so. Rather, they differ as to whether all Christians or all true believers will continue in faith to the end. For example, Anthony Hokima, longtime professor of Calvin Theological Seminary, stated, Peter puts it vividly, we are kept by the power of God through faith 1 Peter 1 verse 5. A living faith, which expresses itself through love Galatians 5 verse 6. In other words, we may never simply rest on the comfort of God's preservation apart from the continuing exercise of faith. Hokima even writes that he agrees with Arminian writer Robert Schenck when he says, there is no warrant in the New Testament for that strange at ease in Zion definition of perseverance which assures Christians that perseverance is inevitable and relieves them of the necessity of deliberately persevering in faith, encouraging them to place confidence in some past act or experience. Reformed Presbyterian James Denny stated, And there is nothing superficial in what the New Testament calls faith, it is man's absolute committal of himself forever to the sin-bearing love of God for salvation. It is not simply the act of an instant, it is the attitude of a life, it is the one right thing at the moment when a man abandons himself to Christ, and it is the one thing which keeps him right with God forever. Grace is the attitude of God to man which is revealed and made sure in Christ, and the only way in which it becomes effective in us for new life is when it wins from us the response of faith. And just as grace is the whole attitude of God in Christ to sinful men, so faith is the whole attitude of the sinful soul as it surrenders itself to that grace. Whether we call it the life of the justified, or the life of the reconciled, or the life of the regenerate, or the life of grace or of love, the new life is the life of faith and nothing else. To maintain the original attitude of welcoming God's love as it is revealed in Christ bearing our sins, not only to trust it, but to go on trusting, not merely to believe in it as a mode of transition from the old to the new, but to keep on believing, to say with every breath we draw, Thou, O Christ, art all I want, more than all in thee I find is not a part of the Christian life, but the whole of it. Topic. Free grace or non-traditional Calvinist view Topic. The non-traditional Calvinist or free grace view disagrees with traditional Calvinists and Arminians in holding that saving faith in Christ must continue in order for a person to remain in their saving relationship with God. For example, Zane Hodges says, we miss the point to insist that true saving faith must necessarily continue. Of course, our faith in Christ should continue. But the claim that it absolutely must has no support at all in the Bible. Joseph Dillow writes, Even though Robert Schenck would not agree, it is definitely true that saving faith is the act of a single moment whereby all the benefits of Christ's life, death, and resurrection suddenly become the irrevocable possession of the individual, per se, despite any and all eventualities." Any and all eventualities would include apostasy—falling away or walking away from the Christian faith and to "...cease believing." What a Christian forfeits when he falls away is not his saving relationship with God but the opportunity to reign with Christ in his coming kingdom. Louis Sperry Schaefer, in his book Salvation, provides a concise summary of the free grace position. Saving faith is an act, not an attitude. Its work is accomplished when its object has been gained. <laughs> Topic. Traditional Calvinists agree with Arminians against the free grace view. Topic. Traditional Calvinists and Arminians disagree with the free grace view on biblical and theological grounds. For example, Calvinist Tony Lane writes, 
The two historic views discussed so far, traditional Calvinism and Arminianism, are agreed that salvation requires perseverance in faith. More recently, however, a third view has emerged, i.e., non-traditional Calvinist or free grace, according to which all who are converted will be saved regardless of how they then live. They will be saved even if they immediately renounce their faith and lead a life of debauched atheism. Many people today find this view attractive, but it is blatantly unbiblical. There is much in the New Testament that makes it clear that discipleship is not an optional extra and that remaining faithful is a condition of salvation. The whole letter to the Hebrews focuses on warning Jewish believers not to forsake Christ and so lose their salvation. Also, much of the teaching of Jesus warns against thinking that a profession of faith is of use if it is not backed up by our lives. Apart from being unbiblical, this approach is dangerous, for a number of reasons. It encourages a false complacency, the idea that there can be salvation without discipleship. Also it encourages a tip and run approach to evangelism which is concerned only to lead people to make a decision, with scant concern about how these converts will subsequently live. This is in marked contrast to the attitude of the Apostle Paul, who was deeply concerned about his converts' lifestyle and discipleship. One only needs to read Galatians or 1 Corinthians to see that he did not hold to this recent view. The author of Hebrews was desperately concerned that his readers might lose their salvation by abandoning Christ. These three letters make no sense if salvation is guaranteed by one single decision for Christ. This view is pastorally disastrous. Scott McKnight and J. Rodman Williams represent the opinion of Arminians on this view. Christians of all sorts tend to agree on this point, to be finally saved, to enter eternally into the presence of God, the new heavens and the new earth, and into the final eternal rest, a person needs to persevere. The oddest thing has happened in evangelicalism though. It i.e., non-traditional Calvinism has taught the idea of once saved, always saved as if perseverance were not needed. This is neither Calvinism nor Arminianism but a strange and unbiblical hybrid of both. Nontraditional Calvinists have taught that if a person has crossed the threshold by receiving Christ, but then decides to abandon living for him, that person is eternally secure. This is rubbish theology because the New Testament does not hold such cavalier notions of security. Any claim to security by virtue of the great salvation we have in Christ without regard to the need for continuing in faith is totally mistaken and possibly tragic in its results. A doctrine of perseverance of the saints that does not affirm its occurrence through faith is foreign to Scripture, a serious theological misunderstanding, and a liability to Christian existence. Harry Jessup succinctly states the Arminian position. Salvation, while in its initial stages made real in the soul through an act of faith, is maintained within the soul by a life of faith, manifested in faithfulness. <laughs> Denominations that affirm the possibility of apostasy the following denominations or groups affirm their belief in the possibility of apostasy in either their articles or statements of faith, or by way of a position paper. Churches of Christ Topic. See also Topic. Apostasy in Christianity Backslide Corporate election Perseverance of the Saints has articles in the external links that support its position. Topic. Notes. Topic. Topic. References. Topic. Topic. Further reading. Topic. Multiple views Arminian view Traditional Calvinist view Nontraditional Calvinist or Free Grace view Topic. External links Topic. Perseverance of the Saints, a History of the Doctrine
by John Jefferson Davis, a traditional Calvinist. Early Christian Writers on Apostasy and Perseverance, by Steve Witzke. James Arminius, The Security of the Believer. The Opinions of the Remonstrants, 1618. The Arminian Confession of 1621 and Apostasy. Serious Thoughts Upon the Perseverance of the Saints, by John Wesley. Arminian responses to key passages used to support perseverance of the saints. Arminian responses to Calvinist arguments for perseverance of the saints. Scriptures used to support conditional and unconditional security. Saving faith, is it simply the act of a moment or the attitude of a life? Saving faith, the attitude of a life. The scholarly evidence. Saving faith according to the Greek New Testament. C13 part series on Perseverance of the Saints by Ben Henshaw. The Orthodox Church affirms conditional security. Messianic Jewish theologian David Stern affirms the conditional security of the believer. Messianic Jewish scholar drive. Michael Brown affirms conditional security. A synthetic look at the warning passages in Hebrews by New Testament scholar Scott McKnight. Christian Apostasy and Hebrews Chapter 6 by Methodist scholar Ben Witherington. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 to 6 and the possibility of apostasy by free will Baptist scholar Robert Passarelli. C. The Society of Evangelical Arminians. For more articles dealing with the Calvinist and Arminian debate.